Hello, <laughs> my name is Jessica, and I am an art mentor here at the California Family Life Center, and this is my partner, Sayer. Hello. Today, we will be showing you two art lessons, and we will be doing good bugs, bad bugs. And basically, for this lesson, we get to be entomologists, which is a zoologist that studies uh, bugs and insects. And I will be using a white piece of paper and markers and oil pastels, and I will be studying different bugs and insects and putting their body parts together to make either a good bug or a bad bug. And I will be using a black piece of paper and a white pastel and I'm going to make a cockroach body. So right now I'm making the body of a cricket and then I'm adding some praying mantis legs and I think my bug's going to be bad. How about you? Mine's going to be a good bug. Good. Then I'm going to make a uh, prey mantis head. And then I'm going to add some spider legs. And even though my bug is bad and I'm adding spider legs, that doesn't necessarily mean that all spiders are bad. Some of them are good, they do good things, but some of them are bad, so just be careful. And I'll be doing prey mantis legs. I'm just adding a scorpion tail. I think I'm gonna put the head of a fly with pinchers on it. Then I'm gonna make a design for the body. All right, so I have the outline of my body and I'm going to start coloring it in. I'm gonna use this medium blue. And I'm gonna leave the center of this open so I can come back in later with a lighter blue and then I'm gonna blend those together. All right, and now I'm just gonna blend this in with my finger. And when you're blending with oil pastels, you're heating up the oil and that's what makes it be able to slide across the paper. And you also want to make sure that you don't push too hard, otherwise it will streak your pastels and it'll just look a little odd. Then I'll be making bar butterfly wings. And then I'm gonna go in here with a different finger so that I don't mix my dark blue and my light blue. And I'm gonna start blending this in. Then I'm going to use this color for the body. And now I'm going to blend in the edge around the light and the dark blue. That looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to use a dark purple for the front legs. And you don't have to make the colors true to what the bug actually looks like. You can use any color you want, be, be as creative as you want. Your bug looks nice. Thank you. Yours as well. I'm gonna start blending that in. Oops, I got a little blue on it, but that's okay. When you're working with smaller shapes, like maybe the arms or like pinchers or the eyes, you can use your pinky or your ring finger or just any finger that you think would work to fit in these little small spaces. Then I'm gonna use this color for the wings. For the back legs, I'm using a lighter purple. When you're working with pastels, if you have them in like a bucket with other pastels, you want to make sure you wipe them off beforehand uh, with just like a napkin so you don't accidentally get little pieces of color when, you're, when you start drawing with your pastel. I'm 
I'm gonna go in with a light blue on the head. And I'm trying to use mainly cool tones for the body of my bug. So that way when we go and do the background, we can use lighter tones, I mean uh, warmer tones, and it just makes it easier for the background and it makes the colors pop. Then I'm going to use this color for the head. I'm using light purple for the eyes. On these pinchers, I'm using this dark, dark blue. Next, the background. Okay, I'm not done with my bug, but I'm gonna have my partner, Eliana, come in and show you guys how to do the background. Hello. <laughs> so by starting off with the background, we want to go in and start sectioning. And you want to make sure when you're sectioning, you go behind the bug. And you can do your sections in squiggles or straight lines, however you want. I'm going to use this color for the first set. Now that Jessica used um, some warm, uh, cooler tone colors for her bug, I know a perfect way to make that pop by using their complementary colors. To blue. is orange and green is red and purple is yellow. So I'm gonna go behind her eye and start off with some orange. Your bugs look really cool, Sire. Thank you. Your background's looking pretty cool, too. Thank you. Now, when you layer those colors when you're doing the background and you go in and blend them out, you really make those colors bloom. So, blend that out. Make sure you're using your different fingers for your darker colors and lighter colors. some pretty pink to the top of the yellow just to add a little difference. I'm going to go in down behind her bug with a little bit of yellow.
make sure I go around her body parts so I don't get any of the colors in there. Now I'm not completely done with the background but I wanted to give you guys a little example of how to do it and Jessica will come back in here and try to finish her bug for you guys. Alright, so I noticed that she used a lot of yellow around the tail area so I'm going to go in with a violet color which is the complementary color of yellow and I'm just going to put that right next to it so that it really pops. I think these two colors look really nice together. And I went ahead and wiped off my fingers, which you should also do if you don't want to mix any of your colors together. So I'm just going to use whichever finger I feel would work best for this. Now I've got most of my bug done, so I'm going to go in with a black pastel. I'm going to go and add some more detail onto the back, and I'm going to make a kind of spirally, swirly pattern. And when you're making a pattern like this, I think it looks best when you kind of do it in swift movements, so that it doesn't look choppy and weird. And you're just going to want to go down and over. And then I'm going to add on a second pattern. I'm going to do polka dots along the back. And then I'm going to come in with another color. And I'm going to do more polka dots in a different color. And if you like, um, in some parts of the background, if you want it to stand out more, especially when it's next to a complementary color, you can line your bug with a black pastel to make a nice contrast between the two. And I think it looks really, really nice when you do that. But I would recommend doing it after you do the background and color your bug, so that way you don't mess up and accidentally get a bunch of black pastel in your color pastel. And then I'm going to go ahead and color this stinger black. Show that it's a really bad bug. Alright, um, so I could keep adding more stuff onto this bug. I could add more colors, more design. I could do a lot of stuff with the background. But we're going to go ahead and show you guys some finished examples of some good bug, bad bug projects. Uh, that some of our mentors here have done and some children that have been mentored have done and we're going to introduce Ellie and Sebastian to show you guys the second method which is thumb bugs. Hi I'm Ellie and this is my partner. I'm Sebastian, how are you? And today we'll be showing you guys method two thumb bugs. We're going to be using our fingers and thumbs to create either a good bug or a bad bug using different parts of different bugs. Now I'm going to go ahead and dip my finger in some paint. We starting with the body of my bug. I'm going to go in with my bug's head. I think we'll be creating, let's create a bad bug disguised as a good bug. Uh -oh. How about you? I think I'm going to do a good bug today. Ah, I see. And I'm going in with two fingers because I think it's more fun that way. And it also makes your process faster. Alrighty. 
Let's start with some black. Let me wipe off my fingers. Also, mixing colors too adds a really cool pattern and different types of sh shapes. He's got to be able to move, so I'm going to add some legs. I'm going to use kind of a brush stroke motion. And as you see, I'm not connecting my legs. That's because later on, I'm going to connect them with a marker. Put them at different angles so it looks like it's moving. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going in to make him a little wing so he's able to fly around. And for his patterns and his wings, I like to go in with the side of my pinky and give it a little brush stroke. And it adds cool little designs to your bug. Those look like some pretty nice spider legs. Just gotta connect them later so they look better. And you can use the tips of your fingers, the side of your fingers, even your knuckles if you feel like. You can go in with my knuckle and give them a little outline. Let's add some color to the legs because some insects, they're multicolored and usually it means they're poisonous and some of them aren't even poisonous. They're just colored to trick others to think that they're poisonous so they don't get eaten Ooh, your bug's looking scary. Oh, thank you. Your bug's looking quite nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Just gonna go in with my knuckle again and give him another little outline. Tom for a scorpion's tail. This is not going to be an ordinary tail. It's going to have two stingers instead of one. And I think I'm going to give mine some grasshopper legs using the stroke of the pinky again. And then I'm going to pull it down. Second stinger. Whoop. Those are some nice colors you're using. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I almost forgot the head. Mixing just a little bit of the green with the brown for his front legs. Time to add for some black eyes. Head of my tail a little bit.
color. And I think I'm ready to use the markers now. And make sure you have a paper towel or um, a wipey nearby so that you can wipe your hands before you move on to your markers. I believe I'm starting ready to outline my body. I'm gonna use a crayon this time. What color is this? Oh, outer space. It's a nice color. I didn't know outer space had a color. Outlining your fingerprints can add a nice little texture to your bug. You can make them choppy, you can fully outline them. Adds different patterns and details. I'm going to start outlining my legs with the marker. And then, as you see, this spot I just created, that spot, that's called a negative space, which means negative color. So I could just fill that in with a marker. You can also fill those in by stippling, and that's when you lightly dot on your page to fill in your blank spaces. And doing it with different size markers and different colored markers too makes it look really cool and really detailed. Now different markers you could use. Could be one that's skinny like this. It could be one that's a little bit thicker like that. Or if you really want a bigger dot, you could use something like this. I almost put the wrong cap on the wrong marker. Let's continue in getting my legs together. You want to get as close to what you created so you don't just get a big old blob instead of the shape you want it to look like. I'm going to go in and outline his legs. And I think I'm going to give him little hairs too. Oh, pretty cute. Get a hairy little bug. <laughs> Just get that there. We're not completely done, but if you look behind us, you can see some good bugs, bad bugs done by mentors such as Ellie and I, and other children that have been here at the CFLC place. So if you would like more inspiration, I, rec I recommend this book called The Spider by the and the Fly by Tony Dieterlisi. It's got some really cool illustrations. You can see some spirits here. You can see a ladybug, a fly, and a big old spider. Oh, you can see this is a really bad bug by his long, scary legs. Multiple eyes he's staring at his captured fly with. I don't think the fly is having a very good time. So, I recommend the spider and the fly. Might spark some interest. You might draw something similar or something that you would like him to add. So grab your sketch pad, grab a marker or a pencil, and get out there. Go into the garden and plant some beautiful flowers to attract good bugs. Go explore. Bug world is fascinating. We'll, we'll see, see you, you in, in the, the garden. garden. Ah. <laughs>